Hello, hello. Y'all, y'all, y'all are cool. You're cool. Say hello. Say good evening. Do your hugs. Do your smooches. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Good evening. Good evening. I, I assume we're live, although usually someone from tech comes down and does this, so I don't see that, but it is 7 o'clock. And I'm telephone company trained, and anybody who's worked for the telephone company knows they don't fool around. Attendance, when you need to be there at 10 o'clock, if you were 10 one, you were late, and you would get spoken to. And I had that type of training, so it sort of stuck with me for the remainder. So good evening, good evening. King and queen, I like that, I like that. Good to see, good to see everybody. Um, also, also, we want to welcome those who are joining us online. Just great to have everybody here. Uh, we've got a fantastic uh, refuel in store for everybody. What's our theme? And what particular flavor? In a crisis, in a crisis, yeah. So we look forward to uh, his messenger that's going to come before us this evening, uh, Deacon Craig. We always know we have visuals, we have creativity, and you're going to be challenged. One thing I know about Brother Craig, don't give the surface answer, go deeper. <laughs> go deeper. He's going to challenge you to go deep. So we're looking forward to that meal that we are going to get this evening. So uh, before we get started, though, we'll have uh, a word of song by uh, Mr. Michael. He'll come forward, and then let me see, uh, let me see. We're going to have somebody open us up with a word of prayer. Uh, and you've done it recently, so you know, you've done it recently. So um, my brother, you want to come and give us a word of prayer? Okay, good. I'm sorry, I forget your name. DeAndre. DeAndre. So after Michael opens up, you know, verse or two. DeAndre will come forward, give us a word, and then the next voice after that will be Deacon Craig. If the skies above you are gray and you are feeling so blue, and if your cares and burdens seem gray all the whole day through, well, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. And look by faith and see it, my friend, trust in his promise. Why don't you just sing and you'll be happy today? Press along to the goal. You ought to trust in him who leadeth them. And he will keep your soul as the world. Be faithful, look to Jesus and pray. And lift your voice and praise the miss song. Sing and be happy today. Let's bow our heads. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer. We ask that you, um, um, as the speaker comes up and delivers your message, Father God, we ask that you be with him. Father God, we ask you to be with all those who are online and, and in the building today uh, to receive this message in your name. In Jesus' name we pray, man. Amen. And good evening, church. And if you will, open your Bibles to Jonah 2. We're talking tonight on the topic, praying from a cold-blooded crisis. Praying from a cold-blooded crisis. And since this is the book of Jonah, it's really, really familiar to all of us, even from uh, childhood. So we know the book uh, very easily. So what I want to do is actually read the text. I want to read Jonah 1 and Jonah 2, and then we'll have a little bit of commentary here and there. But I just want us to really soak up God's word. And of course, there's lots to say, lots of imagery and, and similarities to the New Testament, as we'll get into. Um, a little bit of backdrop on Jonah. And I don't want to go to too many scriptures because I rarely finish my notes um, but I do want to try to get through these notes today. 
And so what, uh, what I will say is this. Is everybody at Jonah 1? Jonah 1. Okay. And so basically we know um, how, how Jonah is, is set up. It's set up around Jonah, who is a prophet of God. And he was commissioned to go and preach to Nineveh. And ultimately, he ran from that commission, fleed the commission, and he ultimately was swallowed up by a great fish. Some liken it to a well. Regardless, it was a great fish. Afterwards, he ended up preaching to Nineveh. He repented, which this, which this text is going to highlight, you know, God's mercy, God's grace. God's kindness, God's long suffering, and all of this. So, a lot of the text is surrounded around Jonah being one of the only prophets that we'll read in scripture where it's just strictly about him, about the prophet. Whereas in other books, we may read the prophet is talking and conveying the message to Israel or to God's people. So, this is the most interesting aspect of this, and, and also the likeness to Christ. Um, as we'll see. Now, Jonah, as he was being commissioned to go and preach to Nineveh, we know that the theme of the story is that he ran from that commission from God. Ultimately, in the fish, we'll read that he started to pray, putting himself into a penitent or a situation to where he repented and asked for God's mercy, which, of course, God always is always merciful to his children. Um, and in that situation, we'll also uh, notice that Jonah had something in the background that we don't see. So if you have notes in 2 Kings 14, verse 25, somewhere in there, it will mention how Jonah was a prophet at that time to Jeroboam II. So some people think this is a fairy tale and it's not a true event or a true story in scripture, but Jesus likens himself to Jonah as well. When he mentions that Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights and that he too, of course, will kind of revisit that to make it more meaningful, especially to those who are online, who are not members of the Lord's body. We'll try to really emphasize that point as a point of evangelism for us. And in saying that, Jonah's commission to go and save the city of Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. And the children of God at that time were flourishing. God had blessed them to be victorious and, and to enjoy all of their victories over these neighboring countries. But Assyria was looming large they were growing in popularity and fear from all the other nations and they were uh, in the position to be the the rulers of the land at that time and as we read in um i guess hosea um is one of the contemporaries with him in amos those books Jonah was with those. Those were his contemporaries as prophets at that time. And they're going to preach about how Israel, God's people will be taken back into captivity because of their lackadaisical thinking, being comfortable in the gifts and blessings of God. Back to the point, Jonah was commissioned. I need you to go preach to these people, the Assyrians, who were an evil people who had developed the most torturous ways to punish each nation that they, they took, or each, each uh, war or battle they had, they would take people and they would even impale them all the way through the tops of their heads and then leave them for statues for other people to recognize that their um, dictatorship, their rulership, that they were serious about their militant power. And I mean, there's some other extra biblical commentaries that you can read about them that would say they would fl flay their victims and use their skins as walls around their city. I mean, it was grotesque, you know, but it's just, they were a bad group of individuals. So look at Jonah's mindset here. These 
heathen nations, these other non-Jews, these people outside the covenant of God who were evil, not just because they weren't under God's sovereignty, or they were under sovereignty, they weren't a part of God's people, and they were evil. Jonah had this mindset. Why am I going to give these people hope and they are outside of our covenant? They're not a part of our race, our people. They're not a part of our church. Why would I give them the message? They're not going to hear anyway. Do we ever find ourselves in that position? Do we ever find ourselves in that position? If we are ever in that position... I brought some spikes for the men's class, teaching Jonah as well. Some track spikes were running from God at that point. So whenever we are not doing God's will, and we decide to depend on our own volition, our own mindset, our own uh, ways of resolving the situation we're in, consider yourself on the move. You're on the run from God. You don't think of it that way. Because you're trying to deal with the situation at hand. The things are, it's, it's, it's dealing with your emotions. You're feeling a type of way about a situation. And you're not putting God first. Jonah, in the same mindset, decided to flee far away from God as far as he could. God was directly talking to Jonah at that time to all of his prophets. He was giving them direct prophecy, right? And so Jonah, thinking, since I can communicate with God, I can get away from God. And what do we know about God and his location? <laughs> That's right. God is everywhere. So whatever we're going through, whatever we're dealing with, if we decide to lean on our own understanding and go away from God in that instance, as far as we run, as fast as we go, no matter what the distance is, running away from God you will always end up running into God. Do y'all know what I mean? You're going to always run into God. Whenever you lean to your own devices, you're going to run into God. He's there everywhere. Jonah was in the fish. God was there. Jonah was on the ship. God was there. He is going to be where we are. So that is the in, in, emphasis that we want to put on the fact that trusting God, regardless of our circumstances, deliverance, will be the ultimate result when we're in his, uh, his hands and his care. Jonah 1, and I'll read this um, pretty quick, and it's so we can kind of look at it, because we kind of read through it sometimes, and I'll just drop some notes, a couple little points here and there, and then we'll kind of focus a little bit more on um, chapter 2, where we want to get the emphasis where Jonah's prayer starts, and the, our topic is praying from a cold-blooded situation. And I'm not sure, I guess JK's old school cat, when we used to say cold-blooded, sometimes y'all remember when uh, the reasons why, hey man, let me, get, let me get a dollar, man. Oh man, I ain't give you no dollar. Man, you cold-blooded, man. It's, I don't know where we get that slang from, but it wasn't a good term per se, even though we were kind of uh, joking about it or whatnot. It wasn't a good term. So in this situation, jo Jonah was cold-blooded in his mindset that he was trying to allow the wrath of God to be on a people who he thought deserved God's wrath, right? And so God wants everyone to be saved, John 3, 16. And we know that on this side of the cross, right? He wants everyone to be saved. So our mindset should never be that of, I wish ill will on the next person. And we can, um, we can get that way. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm trying to read. I really am trying to read this book. I'm trying to read it. We can get that way, and we're going to have a hand right here. Let's say here's an innocent situation. If we're, if we're in traffic, if we're in traffic and you're going to your destination and someone squeezes in front of you without a blinker or something of that nature, your mindset will change from the location you're trying to get to safely to what is this fool doing, right? So you're already pronouncing curses on those individuals. 
and no one can drive, in your opinion. <laughs> no, and no one can drive, in your opinion, right? So you pronounce curses. Jonah, in the same mindset, he is not going to preach God's message. Whatever will befall them, let it happen. He's, up, he's um, happy for them to be under God's consequence. So if we're in the same situation and someone cuts us off and we think negatively about them, I hope the cops catch them. I was, just, I was just in this situation today. See, I knew this was going to happen. I was going to start talking. And I was coming. I was going to work. And in my rearview mirror, I saw someone. He was going. He was, he was trying to get there. And I said, wow, he's not going to make that light. I crossed the light. But across the light on the other side was a cop. He was stopped right there. And this dude shoots past me. And I blow my horn. I blow my horn. But it wasn't for him it was for, hey, did you see him? Did you see him? Go get him. Right there. Right there. That, that's, I, have no, I have nothing to do with the outcome of that situation. You know, my mindset at that time should be on, I'm safe, I'm good. He made it around me, going about my business. I can't control that, but I want to control every car. If you don't have your blinker on, I'm going to put mine on, hoping you'll look back and say, oh, my blinker. No, don't let me put it on, because that dude had his blinker on. I think I'm helping you. No, I'm not wasting my time doing that. I need to keep my thoughts pure and not on those things that can detract me from being in a state of positivity. Because whatever you think about is going to last wherever you end up being. You're going to have the residue of that. And sometimes we get to our destination, get out of our car, go into our job, and we leave the Christian you in the vehicle. Go ahead, my brother. Yes. You know, God gave us his word to truly understand his nature. And when Jonah, I think that was one, Jonah knew uh, from the word of God how God could be, uh, he had a wrath. But what he failed to look at, like, for example, if you look at Exodus 34, 6, God reveals that he is a God of compassion Amen. and mercy. Amen. And he is slow to anger and he's filled with love and faithfulness. So yes, he, has, he can be wrathful. He can take his wrath. But he's also a God of compassion. Amen. And, and you know, so I think, and now Jonah's a man of God. That's he's right. a man of God. He's a Amen. prophet. Amen. And he had a relationship with God, and he still failed to realize that about God. That's right. I think. Amen. So in Jonah 1, so we know some of the backdrop in here. So Jonah has an attitude about the Assyrians and Nineveh being the capital city of Assyria, right? So they're essentially Assyria. So they have the same heathen mindset, right? So he really does not want any good to happen to those people. Here's, here's uh, verse one. So this is some of the reason why Jonah's on the move, besides him knowing the fact that God is merciful and he doesn't want him to use that mercy on heathens. And hopefully we're not thinking that way. Oh, that's why I put this chair here, so I can sit down and be quiet and push on hush, like uh, Maurice says. Verse one. Jonah... Now, uh, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. And so he went and paid the fare thereof and went down into the ship to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He's trying to leave the presence of the Lord. Now, this is my Easter basket right here. Even though we don't celebrate Easter, except every weekend is Easter to the Church of Christ, right? Every Sunday is Easter. However, what I have in here are some, what are these? No, sweet Tarshish. Sweet, they're sweet, 
sweet Tarshish. Y'all see what I did right there? Y'all see what I did? Y'all see what I did right there? Okay, so I only have 10 because I thought everyone was going to be with Orpheus who's doing a revival somewhere. But anyway, so if you get one, use them only when you feel like you're fleeing from God. When you find yourself fleeing from God, you say, I'm going to Tarshish. Mm. Don't do it. They're sweet. They're, no, they're not good for you. Jonah thought Tarshish was good, but they're not good for you, all right? Verse, uh, verse number four, it says, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was likened to be broken. Then the mariners, sailors, were afraid and cried, every man to his God, every man to his God, and cast forth the wares cargo that were in the ship it cast into the sea to lighten it but Jonah was going down again into the side of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep and what we want to do is appeal here to those who are online who are not Christian Church of Christ we want to apologize as God's people for are leaving you hopeless and not giving you God's word. We apologize. We will do better. Here we go. Verse 5. But so the mariners were afraid. And you remember, uh, there was the same scene that happened in Mark 4 when Jesus and his disciples were on the ship. And where was Jesus at? Yeah, he was down on the bottom sleep. He was down on the bottom sleep. Um, so they were afraid, and they're like, Jesus, you're just going to leave us here to perish? Verse, verse 6, so the shipmaster came unto him and said, what meanest thou in his King James, you old sleeper? Arise and call upon your God. So remember in the previous verse, they were calling on their gods, right? And here's another commercial break, Brother Bill. If you're not in God's in God's church, if you're not a part of God's family, whoever you call on other than God, your reply will be silence. You will not hear back. There is no power other than the power of God. In that chapter we were reading when the apostles were, were afraid and the ship was being tossed, Gilligan's Island, and they were afraid. They said, Jesus, are you just going to leave us here? And he came out and he told the winds to do what? Peace be still. There's only one God who controls nature, and that's the man, Jesus Christ. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise and call upon your God. If so, that, if so, that God will think upon us that we may not perish. So at some point, this is what we resort to as sometimes. We resort to other things to soothe our situation when we're in a crisis. And sometimes our prayers are amiss because I'm really focused on this situation and I know I should pray. But in my prayer, I really, I'm struggling because I'm thinking about this thing as opposed to relying 100% on the power of God to deliver us. Has anybody ever doubted that? Has anybody ever been in a situation where you were, I don't think this is going to work out. This just does not look like it's going to work out. Run away from Tarshish, not too Tarshish. Verse 7, and, it, and, and, they, and they said, everyone to his fellow, come and let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. And so they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. So all these events are starting, to, are starting to happen. So they want to know, well, why is this storm happening to us? They were just at the port. Jonah arrived to the port. He was running from God. And, and he, was, he was like, hey, I need it. Where is the ship going? Tarsus, oh, good. That's at the end of the, world. end of the world. Let me go there. I want to go there as far as I can away from God. And the port man, hey, do you got a fare to pay? Yeah, I got some fare. Well, why are, you, why, why are you running? Well, I'm running from my God. So they didn't pick it up at that time. So at this point, they're casting lots to see, well, why is this torturous wind, this tumult against us on this sea? 
And whoever the lot falls upon, that will be the person guilty. And their God will be responsible for delivering them. Right? So the way God fixed it was that the lot would fall. How convenient. (laughs) Would we just draw straws or cast lots, however they did it. And it just so happened to fall on Jonah. See God's work, he's running from God, but remember, you, the more you run from God, the closer you r- get to running into God, because God is everywhere. Go ahead, my sister. No, I was just going to make the point, it, it reminded me of the class that, on Sunday, you know, uh, the ladies' Bible class, and I was sharing with the group. Oh, we weren't in there. I know you. Oh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but I was sharing with the group, because I think it's, it's parallel to this, is that I, I was doing the lesson on uh, leaning on God's words during financial crisis. And I was making the point about how we end up being in those situations most of the time is as a result of us focusing up on our desires and not being content with our needs. And what we end up doing is that we gravitate to those desires because of the advertisements oftentimes that happen, you know, whether it's on TV or whatever, you know, that makes promotion of a sale. Mm. You know, which never ends. Right. But we're gravitating to that and we become desirous. Well, desire. Okay, let me get it right. Desirous. Uh, of those things. Yeah, yes. Now I'm trying to pronounce it correctly. But of uh, those material things that we know we really can't afford. And so we end up putting ourselves in financial binds because when we don't have the cash, we automatically you know, gravitate to the credit card because it's on sale and Hmm. then we're paying for the next 20 years. So again, we need to run from the sale. Oh, no doubt. (laughs) You know, so that we don't end up being in those financial perils as a result of our own, um, I guess, our own decisions to be in that. Yes, and not yeah, being good. In those problems, yeah. right? Not being good stewards of God's business, right? Puts us in a situation where we'll ultimately end up in a crisis for our negligence to do good by God's will. Amen. Verse eight, and we have another comment back there. I'm gonna try to get through most of this because uh, we have two chapters to read. Uh, then said they unto Jonah. So there, are, there, Jonah was at the bottom of the ship, and you notice how you're running from God in verse three and verse five. It said Jonah went down onto the ship. Then he went down to the bottom of the boat. So running from God, you you think you're going to freedom, but you're actually going down. You're getting in a worse situation, trying to get further away from God. Your situation increasingly gets worse. We already have this storm up here. Storm is brewing. It's bad enough. The men are scared and terrified, so they go get Jonah. So now Jonah, there's pressure being put on him because he may be the culprit, and he knows He's the culprit and that God's wrath is being displayed or his power is being displayed right there. And he's the cause because they're idol worshipers. They were calling on false gods who could do nothing with the wind. Verse 8, then then said they unto Jonah, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is your occupation? Where you come from? What is your country? And what people are you? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Don't see that? So he's he already is professing where the power is relied, um, where the power is coming from in this storm, from the same God who made the sea, where the storm is. And ultimately, we'll see the dry land come into the picture. But now they're looking and saying, well, his God. It's the God of the sea, and that's where we're being troubled. So this is the, this is the world, the community that we're trying to uh, attract to God's church. They don't have a clue about the power of God. And when we seem to flee from God's power, from God's protection, we're in the same boat. We don't look as though we are in a freed state. We don't look as though we are freed from the same spoils, devices, 
that they're dealing with from day to day. They don't have a resort. They resort to their own ideologies, their own gods and idols, and they end up in the same situation. If we look like they look, we're running to Tarshish. We're looking the same way. We're not showing that we depend on our God. And in this case, Jonah was showing that he didn't depend on his God, but he would reveal him who he was. And we'll see a change of mind here in verse 10. Then uh, were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto Jonah, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea is wrought and tempestuous. And Jonah said unto them, Take me up, cast me forth into the sea, so that the sea can be calm unto you. So we see Jonah attempting to show a little compassion for these men, but his mindset was still perilous. He was still in a hopeless state, spiraling downwards, away from the presence of God, is where he was trying to go, away from the presence of God. And it almost looks like he was in a, a, a mindset where he was suicidal, if you will. Take me and throw me overboard. There's this great wind, a great tornado, hurricane is happening, but throw me in the water. It, you might not survive if we do that. Um, verse uh, 13 nevertheless the men continued to row hard to bring it to land so even though Jonah said throw me overboard even, even the heathen people non, non-Christian people who don't serve our God they were still showing mercy their mercy on Jonah. Well, no, we're not going to throw you. We're going to try to make it. We're going to try to get through this. We're going to try to make it through this. As, as, as uh, futile as it would be to trust your own salvation, to put salvation in your own hands, to devise any means to save yourself will ultimately be futile. They're going to realize this. And this is a commercial break for those who are not in God's church, not in Christ's church, that if you're not dependent on God, for any of your situations to come through for your benefit, you're fighting a winless battle against these earthly, worldly circumstances. So don't devise your own plan. Don't come up with your own scheme. Don't find a mechanism to save yourself. Don't go to a pill. Don't go to a drink. Don't go to a person before you go to the one who has power over all things. Verse 14, wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, we beseech thee. Okay, verse 14, wherefore they cried unto the Lord. Do you see that? First, they, they cried unto their gods initially, but the storms continued to press, still in trouble. So what it's showing here is that Jonah said, hey, I believe in the one God. The God who controls all things, the land and the sea. So they believed that report. Y'all see that? So just the simple preaching of God's word, we don't know what the end result will be because all we're doing is planting those seeds, right? And then the watering will occur and then the increase follows and that's God's plan for the um, rescuing of all men, the same plan. All we have to do is plant those seeds. And that was a seed, even though Jonah just haphazardly threw a seed up there, it was still God's word that still highlighted the power of God. Verse 15, so they took up Jonah, so bless you, um, and said, let us not perish for this man's life, because the seeds were still going, and they prayed out to God, they cried out to God, and they were, they were that, that prayer is still going up. It says, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's sake, for Jonah's sake. And lay not upon uh, this innocent blood upon us, for thou, O Lord, has done as you please, as it pleases thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Now, once they see the power of God happening right here, what, what do you think 
the mindset becomes of those who are not children of God, that are not Christian, if you will. Not, not a type of Christian, not a, a type of Christian, like from a denomination slash Christian, from a Christian standpoint. What do, you, what do you think their mindset is? Right. There, there, was a, there was a belief there. And so if we, look at, if we look at God's plan, what is he asking for those who are not children of God? You have to hear God's word, right? Jonah preached that. And then you have to believe what you hear. And once you believe what you hear, you act on which you, so once they did those basics, basic steps there, there was some water involved. We won't call it baptism, but there, was, but there was some water involved right there. That basic belief, they were able to recognize and witness firsthand the power of God, not their gods who couldn't deliver them, but the one God of heaven and of earth. And so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And I would like to submit at this point, Jonah said, or God said, hey, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach to that city. Jonah had a different mindset to do his own thing. I think God's preparation was already in play. Do you know what I mean? God's preparation was already in play. Yes, which way are you going to go? Oh, you're going to go as far as possible, huh? Well, guess what? I'm going to put a boat down there, right? I'm going to have a boat there waiting for you to get on. And when you get on that boat, there's going to be some winds that's going to be turbulent. You're going to end up being thrown overboard, which we're going to go ahead and read here in a second. But God is already preparing the means for the positive end for those whom he loves. Jonah is still a prophet, right? He, God has chosen him. Are you chosen? Amen. You're chosen by God. You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. Y'all going to make me stop and preach. But uh, here we go. That's right. So verse 2. It says, Jonah prayed unto the Lord out of the belly of the fish. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. So when Jonah was praying, he noticed that God heard him. So that was another example of how repentance puts us back into that favor with God. Sometimes we will get overwhelmed in these crises that we deal with, and it's going to seem overwhelming. It's going to seem tempestuous. Like there's no way, there's, it's perilous, it's hopeless situation we're in. But prayer, prayer has this power that through the medium, through the mediator of Jesus Christ, will get God's ear to lean a little bit further down and you can see him bend at his waist and his head turn up a little bit and his hand goes here and say, what is my child saying? And he will provide deliverance. Even though the situation may look perilous to us because Jonah was in the fish. It says, for thou hast cast me into the deep, the midst of the sea and the floods come past me about and all the billows and thy waves pressed over me. So the vision here is Jonah stone overboard. And there may be a couple of visions you may have, but one that I had here was he's going to describe kind of two, two aspects that Jonah was going to the bottom of the sea. Now he may have already, like as soon as he went in the water, the fish was there and engulfed him at that point. Or it could be just falling, 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 falling into the sea and getting caught up in the weeds and things like that. And then at the bottom of the sea, the fish came and got him at that point. So at any rate, Jonah's falling. It's perilous, still going down. Verse 4, then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again towards thy holy temple. Because he's thinking about God's people. He's thinking about well, God's people and where he would be in a situation where he would be praying to God, remembering his state of salvation, the position he was in. Right here, this is a perilous situation, even to the point of death, right? 
The waters can pass me about, even to my soul. The deep closed around about me. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down, down into the bottom of the mountains. The earth and her bars was about me forever. So it looks like he's in that situation to describe uh, Gehenna or a grave, if you will, that he was in the jaws or the bowels of hell. He was there. And it says that, yet thou hast brought me up from my life from corruption, O Lord my God. And when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came unto thee, into thine holy temple. So, as Jonah's running, he's not remembering God. As Jonah's on the sea, going, I mean, on the boat, and going down to the bottom of the boat to get as far away, he's not remembering God. But when his situation got to a point where there was nowhere else to turn, he couldn't run any further. Running was not even in his power to do. He remembered to pray to God. What is that telling us? No matter, nothing's too big for God. That's right. That's right. What he's telling us here is that your situation, it's never too late to call on God. It may seem too late. The situation may be perilous for us. Hope may be lost. Gilligan's out of it again. But hope may be lost. But it's never too late to repent. It's never too late to repent. And I'm saying it's never too late because, of course, if you're in a Judas occasion, that's after the fact. It can only be too late if you can say that, if you can add that time aspect to it, lateness. All right? And you can feel like God won't hear me because I've been running from him. Right here, Jonah was in the bowels of death, the jaws of death, but he said he remembered. Uh, my prayer for us is that our memory is jogged way sooner than we get into these situations where we're having to pray from a crisis. Jonah, heart, cold-blooded, wanted the, the, the end, wanted the death of one of God's wrath on Nineveh and all the people there. He wanted that wrath there. His heart was cold. He's cold-blooded. But now he's in this cold-blooded crisis and he's praying from that situation. His heart wasn't right, but God still heard him even in that situation of peril. Almost there. We're almost done. Yes. And we can entertain questions after this. I almost made it. Yes. Okay. Verse 7. And when my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord and my prayer came unto thee and into thy holy place and holy temple. And they that observed lying vanities forsake their own mercy. And if that's kind of giving us another mindset of you have your own way. You have your own things. You're, you resort to something else, an idol or something other than God, a vanity, if you will. Initially, those sailors were calling to their God. It was a vanity, if you will, until, you know, they recognize that the one and only God who is in control of all scenarios and all situations has the ultimate control. Um, you remember, because when you get in peril, I think uh, Matthew uh, 19 says that um, with men, things seem impossible. Right. But with God, all things are possible. And we quote those scriptures and they're there. And Jonah's here for us to reflect back on so we can learn to avoid being in these states of mental condition to where we resort to ourselves. If God is all powerful, that's my first resort. You know, that's that's the first avenue that I go to. And I would dare to say the only. Because after God, then there's you. And that would supersede God in your mind if you stop trusting God and decide to trust yourself. Stand firm. That's our theme, right? We're standing firm. Verse 9, but I will sacrifice, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving, and I will pray, I will pay that which I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah up onto dry land. 
Amen. So we'll, we'll read here, um, and I'll just go a little further than I need to because we got done, done earlier than I thought. It says, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, arise and go to Nineveh because he was running. So now he's out of the, 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 the belly of the fish right here. He says, go into Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto them that, I, that which I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter that city. Here he goes right here. This is what I want you to hear. Enter that city um, a day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So that was a part of his mindset. He was going to run from God long enough to where God's wrath would destroy Nineveh. He was counting the days, counting down. But he's going to, of course, have a change of heart. And ultimately, he would be out of, and let's envision this, Jonah in the state that he was in. He was in the belly of a fish. And so whatever's happening inside a fish's stomach to where digestion is taking place is happening to Jonah, but he's not being consumed. Do y'all know what I mean? So Jonah's, I think he was saying, there's weeds all around me. So if the fish is just mouth is open and he's eating whatever is coming his way, kelp and all the things that are going in there, Jonah's in the midst of all of that. So those gastric juices and acids are eating him up. So he's, I'm not sure what acid does, but I think it may make you look different. You might look a little different when you come out. So now here's, here's his whale. So the whale spits up Jonah and he comes out of the well onto dry land. And so now he's taking the, the path the right way after his prayer. So when we pray to God, God's going to deliver us. But as we go about our way, we're acting as though we've been delivered. Jonah was delivered. So when I pray to God, I'm putting forth the attitude of deliverance, right? The devil is going to want you to have the attitude of being devoured. But God is having you to have the attitude of deliverance. So you have to have that mindset. That's the reason I'm going to God, because I expect deliverance to follow my prayer. So Jonah's looking in the condition he was in. He takes his three-day journey. He gets to Nineveh, and he's supposed to be going to preach. So the people are looking at this cat, right? And he's, uh, he can't be looking smooth right now. He cannot be looking smooth right now. His hair is disheveled. He may have tried to do something with his hair, smooth it back or whatever, but he kind of looks crazy. So he's preaching to Nineveh, and his words, I think it was maybe eight to ten words he said. He, was, he gave a short sermon because he, he still didn't really want them to be saved. But everyone believed Jonah's message. They believed in God. Is it because they saw what Jonah looked like when he was preaching and said, hey, that dude, God is real because he brought him back from the dead. He saved him from his wrath. He may save us. So they ended up believing in Jonah's preaching and the city of Nineveh was saved even to the point of their animals being in a, rep a penitent state. They put sackcloth and ashes on the animals. So everyone repented and the city was saved. And Jonah was still kind of upset and wanted to sit back and watch the whole thing play out to see if God was going to follow through with what he did. But his whole, the whole message is for me in this, in this scenario is going to be this. We, as God's people, have to be in a position where we're going forth forward to do God's will. Y'all remember Matthew uh, 28, 18 in that, in that parable where Jesus is saying that all power in heaven and in earth has been given unto me. Y'all remember that? Go ye out there, preach and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world, right? So that's our commission. Which direction are we running? Which direction will we go? The Pharisees challenged Jesus back then to say, hey, show us a sign. Jesus said, I'm not going to give you a sign, but the sign I will give you is a sign of Jonah. And just like Jonah was in the belly of the fish, 
three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth three days and three nights. And on the third day, Jesus would resurrect. And that would, of course, be that sign. And that's what we want to preach to those who are not God's children, who are not in the church of Christ, who are not a part of God's family, is that Jesus, the story that we read in the scriptures, in any book you go to, is going to have a message of the gospel that we want to stand on. And no matter what your situation is, no matter what crisis you fall in, you don't ever want to depend on yourself. You don't ever want to depend on yourself to get out of a scenario because that scenario will ultimately end up perilous. And what we do sometimes, we get thrown into the deep waters and we want to save ourselves. And sometimes we'll even devise methods to come out of the water, you know, Like we'll we'll put we'll put on a we'll put on a life vest. Right? We'll put on a life vest as though the life vest is going to provide us safety. But when we go to Romans 13 and we'll read that God says put on who? And that's Ephesians 6, y'all. No. <laughs> In Romans 14, Romans 14, we'll put on Christ. That's what we're to put on. Put on Jesus Christ. That's the flotation device that that leads you to safety, that gets you to land, that no storm can overcome, no storm can drown, no storm can overwhelm. Jesus is your life vest. Amen. What you got, my brother? Yeah, Jonah went to uh, Nivea to uh, give a sermon to some wicked people about sin. Mm Mm-hmm. And so what I found interesting is that when he got there, he uttered maybe five words of Hebrew. Mm. And essentially he said, which meant 40 more days and Nineveh shall be overturned. Mm -hmm. He never mentions anything about God. He never Mm -hmm. says what they need to do to respond to his message. And he never even mentions their sin. Mm. Right. So I believe the spirit of God was had to be there because can you imagine cows even repented? <laughs> oh, no doubt. From that message. No doubt. Repented. No doubt. If he can make a donkey speak, <laughs> a donkey speak, he can definitely get cows repented. But yes, no yeah, doubt. So no God's doubt. spirit was ha- had to be there. Yeah, definitely God's spirit is yeah. always moving. Yes. If you think about it, and this is this is some other news kind of what he was talking about in Hebrew. If we look at Jonah Look at Jonah's name. I think his name means dove. Right? His name means dove. And so what imagery does that give us? Yeah, of course, peace. But even more powerful than peace. Like you were saying, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came down like a dove, right? So it gives us that imagery, of course, that would, of course, lead us to understanding the gospel that presents us that, that power once we're God's children. Any other questions? Any other comments? Now, y'all know, so don't travel to Nineveh. I mean, don't travel to Tarshish. Go to Nineveh and Dallas, which is Dallas. But here's, I only have, I only have 10, 10 sweet tarts up here. So it's 10 sweet Tarshishes. This is sweet Tarshish right here. But don't eat them. Don't eat them unless you find yourself headed to Tarshish. And when you eat it, it reminds you, spit it out. Don't go there. Not just because it's going to give you cavities. <laughs> uh, one of the things I found interesting, one of the things I found interesting was that Jonah trying not to go and do what it was that God had him do. And like you were saying, you know, it just so happened that there's a boat there and he gets on this boat and, you know, the waves and, you know, the correlation, you know, going back uh, to the book of Mark and, you know, Jonah gets thrown overboard, right? And so now the sailors, through him, use him, they had to basically sacrifice him you know, mm-hmm. through this water. And so these sailors ended up being saved and they started now, you know, worshiping the Lord. And then Jonah's, you know, sitting here sinking and this big old fish comes and gulps them up and throws them out on the beach. And I'm just sitting here thinking the three days that he was sitting in that, in that fish, 
And the whale, this whale is probably taking him to where it was he was supposed to go in the first place. Mm -hmm. So not only is the whale now, you know, God done sent this whale to come get the joke. Like, hey, I said I need you to go somewhere. Yeah, two rides. You, you, yeah, you running, <laughs> but I'm still going to get you on the on the path to where I need you to hey, go. Hey, man, that's a good word. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, and in the process of them three days, you know, Jonah began to start coming to his senses a little bit. As he's recognized the situation that he didn't put himself into. So now when he gets, and he's like, all right, God, I'm going to go do it. And now he, God has already done put him back in, a, in, in fair position to be on the right track. That's and right. then he goes and says just a few words. Like, it's, just, it's, it's, it's interesting because we tend to you know, get in our own head and our feelings and we you know, kind of drift away from God. And yet God has a way of sending something to us, a mm. situation or a crisis, that will bring us back down to our knees to say, hey, you know, you, I'm trying to help you right now, even though it may not look like it. But right. I'm really sending this to help you so you can get your mind back right, so I can get you back on this right path. And then when we get our minds right, get on this right path, we find things to not be as difficult as we thought they were going to be. Interesting. And it yeah. works out. That's right. Amen. And I like, I like that message. I like that message. It's definitely positive. And we want to continue to have a positive message like that, but not keep it to ourselves. You know, the message that we, we are supposed to be espousing is to Nineveh. We're supposed to be telling Nineveh about the gracious, goodness, long-suffering of God, right? That's, that's our call. That's our marching orders. We're going we're gonna to get perilous times, and we may get gulfed up by a fish, maybe Jaws, whoever it is. It doesn't matter because it, even, not, even Jaws, not even Jaws has more power than the power of Jesus Christ. You remember that? Even if it looks like death is imminent in your life, Jesus said, oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? Right? And death is swallowed up. All right? Christ gives us that victory. Go ahead, my brother. Yes, uh, this is the time when I think about the law of Christ. You know, we, God wants us to love our enemies. Amen. Right? Not despise or hate our enemies. He wants us to love our enemies, even when we don't think our enemies deserve God's Ooh. love. That's right. Yeah. It's a good word. Good word. One more sister. I was going to say, um, we, have to be, we have to be careful of our attitude even when we go. Because uh, Jonah was still mad about it. Amen. He was still mad about it. He, he did what God told him to do. But then, you go to chapter 4, he's really acting like a little kid. <laughs> really. He's mad. He's sulking under a tree and God mm -hmm. says a plant. A worm. Right. Yeah. He, said, right, he, he, put, he get, goes and get under the shade tree and God says a worm to burn him. And right. You know, to, make the sun shine on them but it's just you have to be really careful about how you go in the name of the lord amen right we go in the name of the lord but sometimes we go grudgingly uh sometimes we go uh with with bad attitudes and and you know even when we give we can't give like that we shouldn't be giving grudgingly or of necessity right right god loves a cheerful giver when it comes right. to what we do in the kingdom he doesn't want us to do it it's better that you not do it First mm. Corinthians says a lot of people gonna say, "Didn't I do all this stuff in your name?" That's right. But you ain't love the people when you did it. Right. So you Matthew seven. It in no way. That's right. It's not gonna mean nothing. So you gotta be, you gotta, you really gotta check yourself, right? Before you wreck that yourself. You, that, that's what I. Mm. That's, we know the song, don't we, mm. Brother Craig? <laughs> yeah, but you really gotta check yourself so you're not, you're not trying to function as a servant of God in the wrong spirit. Amen. That's not a good thing. That's right. That's right. Yeah, because and, and though others may not see it, the Lord knows your heart. Right. Because right. people people fake all day long. They'll smile in your face, but they really don't want to be here. They really don't want to do the work. They really don't do you know old backstabbers. Mm -mm -mm. you know? <laughs> Amen. And those are good words. And we're even though we're talking about this, and we know we're supposed to be talking about this and all this goodness. When we leave here, are we leaving the goodness of God in this building? Or when we get in our cars, going where we're going, am I going to have the same attitude towards those non-driving heathens out there who have no clue how to use a blinker, cut you off in traffic? Is my mindset going to resort back to what I think should happen to them? Maybe they signal 
<laughs> something like that. Maybe they signal like it's broke. Right. So we have no clue. We don't have a clue what's going on with anyone else um, in that situation. But we need to humble ourselves and practice those things that are becoming of a child of God. You know what I mean? Continually practice those things that are becoming of children of God. Any more uh, questions? No? No? Well, we'll allow whoever's designated to come do the uh, invitation. Uh oh, Mo Better. I'm just curious as to, um, <clears throat> to when, you, when you blew the horn, did that guy get a ticket? No. Did not get a ticket. That's right. So in, in, saying, in saying that, all these, all these thoughts that are going through my head and concern about something I have no control over comes to naught. So I can, I, can, I, can allow, I can allow momentary stress, even though I didn't really mean that. I wasn't stressed about it, but enough to, enough to be concerned about, I hope you get, thank you, getting off course, enough for me to be distracted from what I was doing. I was allowed to be blindsided by something on the outside of the sphere of positivity, which I like to operate in, right? And that can happen. So nothing happened to him, and I wasted that energy. That I, that I could have been doing some deep breathing. You know, something I can be calming myself, giving myself peace, practicing good practices. Good point, Mo Better. I'd like for everyone to pray for me because I have a bad habit of honking my horn when people do foolish stuff like that. And I know that's dangerous, but I'd like one of those boxes, but I want to share it with somebody because if I eat all of them, I have a problem. <laughs> yeah, you will have a problem. Yeah. That's right. Well, no, not because of the candy, but because of my attitude. Oh, that, no doubt. We're to only eat them when we find ourselves in that position. Right? Thank you for clarifying that. That's right. So they're just reminders. So hopefully next week, if you get one, you'll still have that box unopened. That's right. Don't eat a sweet tooth, because a sweet tooth isn't good either, because that sends you to the dentist. And Nora was talking about finances earlier. And that, you know, Go ahead. We have another comment, and then we'll have the invitation. Yeah, real quick. I was just looking back, and I don't know that Jonah um, had anything happen to him by Nineveh. Right. I don't know if they did anything wrong to him in any county way. I'll have to look back into yeah. it. It was the, it was the, the nation. Just the, the nation. The, the Assyria, you know, Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria, and they were just a ruthless people. Right. And right. he knew that going to Nineveh, he, he ain't going to hear me because they're ruthless. They're, they're trying to take over the country and all. They're capitalizing on everyone they come in contact with in battle, right, in right. war. And so, but even thinking about that, if it was um, this terrible nation and they did wrong to others but nothing personally to him but there are people who do things personally to us and this message still applies and so mm -hmm. that's what came to mind to me just oh, okay. looking at this is that um salvation belongs to the lord amen and that's what jonah had to come to realize it's that's not right. me that they're going to that's going to go there and save them god sent me here Right. So that he would save them. Right. And oh, for good me, point. it's like that personal message of those who hurt me personally even, mm -hmm. I have to do the same way. That's right. I have to share the message. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Salvation is of the Lord. It's a good message. Yeah, so everywhere we are, that place is blessed because of your presence, even though we don't act like it. You know, we, we kind of get in the fold, get in the mix, and, and take on the attitude of the environment we're in. But that place is blessed. Wherever God's people are, the place is blessed because you're there. You may, you may have a boss or someone who's over you, you're subservient to, but he's blessed because you're there. He may not know the gravity of his blessings, but you know. And that's how we have to portray ourselves. We had another comment, and we got to give that invitation. I think it's just a reminder to be still and know that God is God. And at Amen. the end of the day, when God tells you something or whatever mindset you may have or however you plan on moving to remember that at the end of the day, God's will is going to be done regardless of how you move, how you shake, how you think you got it figured out. When you get to that point of being still and you get back in his presence and you follow what he tells you to do, then it's going to play out how it's supposed to play out. So we have to remember to be still. Amen. Good word.
All right. Well, thank you, thank you. That was a great, great message. Appreciate it, y'all. Appreciate it. Great message. And of course, we got all of our visuals and <laughs> oh, the feedback too. all that stuff that we always get from uh, Bobby Craig. And uh, I just appreciate what you did with that book, with that history, because we don't often get to really dissect the book of Jonah. We all know about the whale, and that's what we all jump to. But we don't really get to dissect all of the lessons and all of the life's lessons and all of the good stuff that is available in that book. So I appreciate you uh, taking that. Um, in terms of an invitation, there's also an invitation. I almost feel like based on that lesson, we could go right to the invitation. Based on that lesson, you really could. But there is this one thing just to kind of remind us, right? We know that Jonah was in the whale or in the fish. We say whale, but in the belly of the fish for three days. And then after he prayed and after God showed grace and mercy, God spewed him out, spit him out. He didn't belong. He didn't belong there. It's kind of like, you know, we know biologically when you eat something that is not right with you, God has designed our bodies to spew it out, get it out of there because it doesn't belong. And then we know that there's a New Testament parallel of that because we know of a savior, of a man, of a God who came down into the flesh, walked among us, was despised, was bruised, was beaten, but was also then put into a grave. But did he belong there? He didn't belong there. So he too had to depart, had to come out because he didn't belong there. So now I'm talking to those of us who are not in Christ. Do you belong out of Christ? Do any of us truly belong out of Christ? Oh, Christ doesn't want any of us to perish. None of us belong out of Christ. So just like Jonah was spewed out after three days because he didn't belong, in the belly, just like our Savior rose on the third day because he didn't belong in that tomb. Same thing applies to those who are not in Christ. You need to have an opportunity. God does not want you. God wants you. He does not want you out of Christ. He wants you in Christ. He loves you. You don't belong out of Christ. We all belong in Christ, because once we are in Christ, then we have access to all of the things that my brother just touched upon. But this is God's plan. This is God's salvation plan. So if you want to get into Christ, you don't get to decide how you do it. You don't get to decide how you, Jonah, uh, Jonah thought, well, you know, I can just make up my own mind. I'll try and divert myself away from the purpose and the mission that Christ has for me. But as we find out, when it's God's plan, it's God's plan. It's going to happen anyway. It's going to happen. So same thing, if you're not in Christ, you don't get to do it the way I say to do it, the way Craig says to do it, the way anybody says to do it. You got to do it the way God says to do it. It's the only way you get in Christ. You heard the gospel. You heard the gospel tonight. And did you believe it? And you like those sailors. Not only are those sailors, not only do they believe it, they pretty quickly learn how to sacrifice, how to worship. They believed it. Do you too believe it? And if you believe it, are you willing to repent and confess? If you are, then the next step is to go down and be baptized for the remission of sins and to receive the gift of that Holy Spirit. That's what needs to be done. You can't just believe and get it. You can't just repent and get it. You can't just hear and get it. It takes all of those steps, not because I say so, but because God revealed how to do it in his word. 
And if we're going to stand on his word, then we have, I don't want to say an obligation. We just have no choice. That's just the way it is. We have to stand on his word. And if you want to receive that gift, you have to do it the way God said to do it. So if you're not in Christ, again, you heard the word. Did you believe it? You did? Are you willing to repent? If so, are you willing to confess? And then we will baptize you for the remission of your sins. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and you will be added, not by me, but you will be added to his church. So at this time, we're going to stand. We're going to have the song of invitation and then we'll come back with some announcements. I'm glad I know you I'm glad you know me We praise our God And we're one big family And I am so glad you gave your life. Oh. Okay. So now, now it's announcement time. So I got to put on my announcement voice. Yes. Of all the men in here on Flock Note, part of the men's channel. If not, what's the name of the place? Just in case. Okay. Okay, old fashioned hamburger place on Beckley. But yeah, as, as many men, if you're not part of, we, there's a flock note channel for men. You want to get yourself added as soon as possible. If you don't know how to, I can show you um, how to get connected. But that's the primary way we communicate is through flock note. And so if you're with a flock note group and a flock note channel, you're not going to miss anything. If you're not, you might. It can, it can happen. So appreciate and, that. Yeah. And then the other thing is we'll do a health in the temple meeting up here at three o'clock. Um, but you have to text me and let me know you're going to be here so we can come. Because we work out, you know, at the end of every month on Saturdays here at 3 o'clock. But let me know because I know this is a um, Texas Relays weekend. There's a lot going on. Um, but, yeah, just text me. If you don't text me, don't show up because I won't be here if you don't text me. Let me know. Mm. And another way you can find out what's going on, the church has a Google calendar where we put a lot of the ministry events are on this Google calendar. But to get access to that, you need a Gmail account to get access, I guess, in the most efficient way. And then you can, you know, get with Sister Bill and she can get you access. So between Flocknote and your Gmail account to the Google calendar, you will have a really good idea of a lot of what's going on. So appreciate you on that. Any other announcements? Yes. But if you can, uh, if you can help, we are Sunday is the Easter egg hunt for our small children. We have candy and eggs that we need to stuff tonight. So if you, the more hands we have, the quicker we can get it done. Uh, so we, it can be ready on Sunday. So if you're available to do that, also if you're listening online, uh, make sure your children are at church, whether it's an Easter egg hunt or not. But we will have an Easter egg hunt for our children. Uh, I believe one to fifth grade. Uh, yeah, one to fifth grade. So come dress. There's a backdrop. There's going to be a, a, a surprise bunny that comes and all of that kind of stuff. So make sure your children are here um, on Sunday. Any other announcements? Yes. Are we doing the prayers? Yeah. No, we haven't started that yet, but we will. We will be. Okay. Any other announcements? Train. 
No, no super. Okay. Okay, so every fourth Sunday we know the senior saints have their class, but tomorrow is no Bible class, but it's training on how to use your iPad, technology, those types of things. That's, that's really good. That's really needed. Any other announcements? Okay. Are the bill yet? Okay, Sister Shaniqua Ward and family are asking for prayer. They buried a brother last Saturday. Then another brother died in the hospital uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, Monday night. And so they're asking for prayer. Those services will be uh, April the 4th, I think it is, or 5th. That's Saturday. Whatever the Saturday is, the 6th, I believe, in uh, Henderson, Texas. Lisa Clayton had surgery today on her foot and she's asking for prayers for recovery. Do we have an update on Brother Thompson as to his condition? We know, okay. we know that he is yeah, receiving the radiation treatments. Uh, we spoke with him last Saturday and called him. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's doing as well as to be expected. I mean, he's, uh, he's standing on God's word. He knows it's a crisis. Um, but we'll also, let's not lose sight of Michelle as well and the family. And if you happen to see the boys, you know, hug them and, you know, show some empathy and some sympathy and some support for them as well. Because he's, you know, he's being Andre. We know Andre. Andre is very, you know, guarded. He doesn't like to show vulnerabilities, but it's tough. He's going through some stuff right now. And, you know, his family is also in there with him. So we don't, I don't necessarily know as of right now kind of where he is. We know the treatments. It's going to be at least a couple of weeks of treatment. And then it might take months of recuperation and monitoring and those types of things. So he's doing as well to be expected. Just pray for him and definitely pray for, you know, his wife and his uh, children as well. Oh, I'm, I'm asking prayer for my daughter called me this morning from New York and, and she just requested um, prayer requests for her and some a few people at my job um, God knows what their needs are but they also asked for the church to pray for them and my mother's friend is here from um, the, um, DeKalb, Texas I believe and her friend she just found out today that her um, her and my mom's um, nursing, partners when they went to school. She's uh, in the hospital and somewhere in Dallas. She was just admitted today. Her cancer came back so we could continue to pray for her and her family as well. One more. Just ask for prayers for Bridge because she's under the weather today. Just kind of uh, just do that. Thank you. And pray for uh, Yvette's mom, Stella Rougely. She had some eye surgery this week. And so we're just praying that uh, everything goes well and it looks like it is. And Yvette's traveling, so keep her in your prayer as well. All right. Um, and real quick also, just uh, keep my family in your prayers. We're going to be traveling uh, to Mississippi early Friday morning uh, to bury my uncle. And then... Uh, to attend the uh, funeral on Saturday, my brother's in law brother. So, and then we'll we'll be coming back uh, Saturday evening. So, just uh, keep us in your prayers. All right, uh, let us bow our heads. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we're just grateful. We're grateful for life, and we're grateful for love, and we're grateful for the opportunity that you've gifted us to be here this evening. We're thankful, Father, for Bar Brother Bobby Craig for the spirit that you provided to him, the knowledge and the wisdom that you've gifted him to share with us. We just ask, Lord, that you would continue to use him and use each and every one of us in this room and each and every member of your body as a powerful vessel for you. Heavenly Father, 
Give us what is needed so that we can continue to stay strong, stay healthy, and stay focused on your word and have the courage to continue to share your word, to be the example to those, Heavenly Father, that may not understand or may not realize what they need in you. So we know, Heavenly Father, that through you all things is possible. We know, Heavenly Father, that through your Lord, through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you granted us salvation. And, Heavenly Father, we want to continue to just walk in the way that you've instructed each and every one of us to do. But right now, Lord, we're also just asking for prayers. You've heard those that have come to you right now. We have a lot of people that are dealing with sickness and illnesses. We have those, Heavenly Father, that are going to be traveling. We have those, Heavenly Father, who are just going through various trials and tribulations. We know, Lord, that you are a healer. You are omnipotent. You are all-powerful. You are the Alpha, the Omega, and the Creator. And there is nothing, Lord, that can come before you that you cannot do. And we know, Heavenly Father, that the things that we bring to you, we trust in you and we trust in your ways and your will. So just give us what we need, Lord. Give us our families and give our families what they need. Give those that we come in contact with let a blessing fall upon them to have what they need. Let us all just remember, Lord, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, your will is what matters. And as long as we understand that, Heavenly Father, and that we continue to walk through you and with you, then we know, Lord, that we're taken care of. So we ask now that you would give us what is needed to go on our separate ways, keep us safe, and allow us the opportunity to come back to your place at the next certain time. And it is in this thing, Heavenly Father, that we ask of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us all pray and say, Amen. Amen. A reminder, if you can help with the Easter eggs, I think it's a Classroom 9. So if you, if you have an opportunity. And we did not mention, but we know we got the play coming up. And yeah, we got the play coming up. You want to go to the play? You know about the play? You want tickets? There, there. Right there, Elroy and Kim, you can purchase your tickets from them.